Tonight on Newswatch, I'll give you the latest news on a special guest Iowa State hosted last night. And I'll provide an up-to-date on ag employers in the state of Iowa. I'll have your updates on all things Iowa State sports. Stay tuned, you're watching Newswatch. Good evening and welcome to News Watch. I'm Kaylee Crow. And I'm Alan Chatfield. Thank you for joining us. Captain Scott Kelly came to Iowa State last night to do a lecture on his year in space. The speech was moved from the Memorial Union to Stephens Auditorium due to high demand. Kelly went on space four space flights, commanded the International Space Station and three expeditions, and was a member of the year-long mission to the International Space Station starting in 2015. He ultimately set the American record at the time for the most consecutive days in space. Kelly also participated in many NASA studies on how that much time in space can affect the human body. A big result of theirs was that his DNA changed 7% and has not returned to what it was before going to space. Ag employers are having to look harder and harder for in entry-level employees. Ag employment in the state of Iowa has always been plentiful and now employers are having trouble finding experienced and qualified individuals. Director of Career Services for ISU's College of Agriculture and Life Science, Mike Gall, stated due to low unemployment rates and the addition of new jobs in the ag economy has made employers more flexible and open-minded with potential hires. Gale also stated that the college had a record number of employers at their fall career fair. There were over 270 companies in the fall, while the spring brought a little over 100 employers. An Iowa woman whose infant son's lifeless body was found in a baby swing has been in prison for life without possibility of parole. Court records say 22-year-old Cheyenne Harris was sentenced Tuesday in New Hampton, and her request for a new trial was denied. A jury found her guilty February 6 of first-degree murder and child endangerment causing death. The charges stem from the death of four-month-old Sterling Cohn, whose body was found August 30, 2017, in a maggot-infested diaper at an apartment in Alta Vista. The swing was in a sweltering bedroom. An autopsy shows he died of malnutrition, dehydration, and an E. coli infection. The baby's father, Zachary Cohn, has also been sentenced to life in prison. Iowa State Senate will be getting a new District 30 lawmaker. District 30 Senator Jeff Danielson decided to step down from his state Senate position last Thursday. Governor Kim Reynolds has already set a date for a special election. The special election will be held Tuesday, March 19th. As of right now, there are two Democrats, a Libertarian, and a possible Republican running for District 30. Democrats Amy Peterson and Tom Ralston are hopefuls for the seat. For the Libertarians, Fred Perryman announced his candidacy, and former House Representative Walter Rogers is thinking about running as a Republican. However, Rogers is taking, talking it over with his family first. Roger ran against Danielson for the Senate seat in 2008, but ended up losing by 22 votes, and he did end up winning a seat in the House. 294 Carver Hall is home to one of the most adaptable clubs on campus. Sarah Peterson has a story. State University is a group that mixes the arts of acting and comedy. The club gets together each Sunday afternoon, and for several hours, they all pitch in on different games and skits. Besides improving on acting and comedy skills, being a member of the improv club has many other benefits. You will laugh every Sunday, <laughs> every single Sunday. And I think it's a great way to work on just like communication skills. So talking to people, um, it just becomes less of a burden if you're ever like unsure what to say. And you learn to like listen to people too, which honestly has like been the bigger benefit for me, is just being able to like watch people and be impressed and then hear what's going on and focus on all those details. <laughs> Students come with various skill levels, and less experienced members can learn some tips by working with other members. 
Anyone is welcome, and students can be as involved with each scene as they want. Uh, trying to get yourself up there is kind of difficult, because some people just kind of want to like, sit back and relax. Uh, you do have to push yourself out of your comfort zone just, just a little bit. And then you just get up there, you do your best. It's, you know, I would say once you get past that barrier, it's such a breeze. You just do your best. You know, I'll give you each like, new things to follow, and you'll just get progressively better at it. The club gives members the opportunity to express themselves in a fun and creative way. For ISU TV with Jim Heinrichs, I'm Sarah Peterson. The club meets every Sunday afternoon at 4, and there are different people there every week. For more information, students can search Improv Comedy Club on the Student Organization Database. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back with more news after these messages. Welcome back to Newswatch. If you visited the Grand Canyon Museum between the year 2000 and June of 2018, you could have been exposed to radiation due to three paint buckets filled with uranium stored at the museum during that time. Employees and tourists were unaware that they were being exposed to radiation. Elston Stephenson, the park's safety and health wellness manager, states that the buckets were placed in the area where tours averaged around 30 minutes. Close to exposure, the uranium ore could have led to 4,000 times the OSHA health limits for children and 400 times the health limit for adults. The Park Service has launched an investigation along with OSHA and the Arizona Department of Health Services. The buckets of uranium ore have been removed from the museum. After months of deliberation, Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders announced Tuesday that he is running for president again in 2020. It will be Sanders' second consecutive bid for the Democratic nomination after losing to Hillary Clinton in 2016. And though he has joined the race now earlier than he did at this point in 2015, Sanders' entry comes in the wake of about a dozen others over two weeks in January and February. Sanders unveiled plans to buy more than 50 years of padding for Social Security by raising payroll taxes on income above $250,000 and hike the estate tax on the wealthiest Americans, suggesting a top rate of 77% on billionaires. Honda will close a car manufacturing plant in England, causing a loss of up to 3,500 jobs. Honda announced today that they will be closing the Sweden plant in the year 2022. Honda says that the decision was based on global trends and not the fact that Britain is leaving the EU. Honda is planning on consolidating all of their European production to, the, to be made in Japan. This news follows earlier announcements this month when another Japanese car manufacturer, Nissan, announced that it will be building a new SUV plant. It will not be building a new SUV plant in England. Nissan said they made the decision not to build the new plant due to, the, due to business reasons, but then added that Britain's uncertain relationships with the EU did not help. Former Seattle Seahawks safety T.J. Cunningham died Sunday at the age of 48, 46. Uh, according to Melissa Alonzo of CNN, police stated Cunningham was allegedly shot and killed by 31-year-old Marcus Johnson after a dispute over a parking spot. Cunningham played for the Seahawks in 1996 after a standout collegiate career at the University of Colorado. The Colorado Buffaloes tweeted the following in remembrance of Cunningham, quote, T.J. Cunningham was a tremendous part of the OU CU community and touched countless others beyond Boulder. We were deeply shocked and saddened to learn of the death of T.J. Cunningham. He was a good family man and had a strong passion for working with young people." End quote. After the break, we'll be right back with Jacob Foss and your weekly weather forecast. Don't go anywhere. You're watching Newswatch. Welcome back everybody. It has been a busy week of weather and we've just got more storms on the way. We have a new storm inbound here this evening. I'm going to talk about that in just a second. We'll be clear for Thursday, but another storm moving in Saturday. That could actually bring some rain for us on Saturday into snow on Sunday, then more snow as we head into next week. So it's going to be a busy forecast. Let's break it down for you. We're starting at 17 degrees right now in Ames. 
Cloudy skies, that snow is getting ready to move into the area. Winter storm morning starts at 9 p.m. tonight, goes through noon on Wednesday. This is for quick, heavy snow. We could see up to two inches per hour, especially up in northwestern Iowa, where things are going to be adding up in terms of snowfall accumulations. Here's that snow I was talking about. It's just getting ready to move in. Still some dry air around the Ames area. That's going to work its way out as we go into the evening hours, and that snow is going to begin. Heavy snow overnight tonight. This thing's going to be adding up quickly. Here's that monster storm. It's going to be moving up from the south, causing a lot of rain down in Tennessee, that area. But we are going to be all snow here tonight as we go through the rest of the evening. The good news, the winds are light tonight out of the east at nine miles an hour right now. They're not expected to be any stronger as we go through the evening hours. 5 a.m. Check this out. Heavy snow coming down. Your morning commute is going to be impacted heavily. Be ready for this tomorrow. It's going to be very snowy on the roads and sidewalks. It's going to be hard to keep up with for all those crews out there. By 11 a.m., this light snow is going to be continuing. By about noon, that's when we expect that snow to be clearing out of here. Clear skies by Thursday. We'll see some melting. Even tomorrow, it's going to be about 30 degrees in the afternoon, so that's going to cause a lot of slushy conditions for us. And here comes Friday. Some more clouds moving into the area, getting warmer. And then here comes some rain for Saturday. Believe it or not, we're going to have about 16 inches of snow on the ground for a snowpack. And then we're going to have rain on top of that. It's going to be causing a big old mess on Saturday evening. We're going to eventually switch over to that snow again once we head into Sunday. Another chance of snow Monday night into Tuesday. Lots to keep track of here. 6.5 inches is what this model is going with for snowfall here. A little bit more up in northwestern Iowa. Here's our forecast for tonight in terms of snowfall. 6 to 10 plus from northwestern Iowa over to the Ames area. I'm thinking around that 6, 7 inch range could be likely here in Ames. I don't know where we're going to put all the snow, but we'll figure it out as we go through the morning hours. A little bit less as you go off into eastern Iowa. Tonight, 16 degrees. Temperatures are going to be rising all night. Heavy snow as we go through the overnight hours. Those winds will be out of the east about 10 to 15 miles an hour. As you go into the morning planner tomorrow, expect that heavy snow right away as you're trying to walk to class. By the midday hours, that's when that snow will end, and we'll see some slushy conditions on the sidewalks and parking lots as we head into the afternoon. 30 degrees for the high as we go into tomorrow. We'll see that snow in the morning, then we'll see cloudy conditions in the afternoon. Clear on Thursday, a little bit cooler, 31 on Friday. 36, rain changing over to mixed precip, changing over to snow as we head into Sunday morning. And here's your next chance of snow. Now, Monday night into Tuesday, you know it's how we're back down into the teens as we head into next week. A very busy forecast. Stay tuned for the details. That's all the time we got for weather. We'll be right back with sports. Welcome back to Newswatch. Thank you for joining us. The Iowa State men's basketball team won big this weekend against Kansas State. The number 23 ranked Cyclones beat the number 18th ranked Wildcats on the road with a score of 78 to 64. The Cyclones are taking on the Baylor, Bales, ba Baylor Bears right now in Hilton Coliseum. Good luck to the Cyclones as they continue their Big 12 playoff race. The Iowa State softball team competed against Stanford, Colorado State, and Portland State this past weekend. The Cyclones went 2 for 3, beating Colorado State and Portland State, but falling to Stanford. The big story came from sophomore pitcher Tatum Kaziak, who made her first appearance as the Cyclone. Tatum pitched 5.2 innings, giving up zero runs and zero hits with six strikeouts, earning her the W against Portland State. Congratulations to the Cyclones, and good luck next weekend in Charleston. The Iowa State women's basketball team continued their hot streak against Oklahoma State this weekend. The number 18th ranked Cyclones cruised past the Cowgirls, beating them 89-67. Leading the way for the Cyclones was Brid senior Bridget Carlton with 24 points. The Cyclones will be heading to Norman, Oklahoma on Wednesday to take on the Sooners. Iowa State is looking for its 20th win of the season for the fourth time in school history and for the first time since the 2013-2014 season. Good luck, Cyclones. Earlier today, Manny Machado and the San Diego Padres reached a record-breaking deal. The Padres signed Machado to a 10-year, $300 million contract, making this the biggest free agent contract in American sports history. Machado is a four-time All-Star and two-time Golden Glove Award winner. The Padres have missed the playoffs for 12 consecutive seasons and ranked 28th in the majors last season. The 26-year-old has 175 career home runs and a promising future ahead. After Machado's signing, all eyes have turned on free agent Bryce Harper to see where he'll sign. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back with our final stories of the night after the break. 
The midterm elections resulted in a record-breaking turnout of voters. Even though she didn't win, Deidre Dugier's platform for Secretary of State for Iowa ran on the belief that everyone should have the right to vote. Holly Schlesselman and Grace Provenzino followed her on her journey. She didn't win the election. But Deidre DeGere did make an impact on this night, unlike any other in Iowa. It was to ensure that each and every eligible voter had equal access to the ballot box. Screenshot after screenshot show Democratic Party candidates, mostly women, taking the lead all election night. Most notably, Cindy Axney, who unseated GOP incumbent David Young, and Abby Finkenauer, who beat Republican Ron Blum, also an incumbent. Both candidates now make it into the history books by being the first women to represent Iowa in the U.S. House of Representatives. 92 women were on the ballot this midterm election in Iowa. That's up more than 40 percent from 2016. Because when it comes to Washington, corporations and special interests, boy, they've had their time. They have a seat at the table, but now it's time for Iowans to have a voice. <laughs> Deidre DeGere was beating incumbent Secretary of State Paul Pate early on election night. It was a real nail biter for family and friends waiting in the wings. When the rural votes came in just before midnight, the first woman of color to be a major party nominee for a state office in Iowa took to the stage for her concession speech. We came up a little short, but how about this turnout, Iowa? Voter turnout is important to Dejir, as voter equality was a cornerstone of her campaign. I'm Deidre Dejir, and I'm running for Secretary of State because as an Iowan, you deserve to have your vote counted. Dr. Kelly Winfrey says the DeGere candidacy illustrates a unique campaign with its own set of challenges. Mobilizing young voters to be interested in a Secretary of State's race <laughs> is not the easiest thing to do, but I think she's done a pretty good job of that. She's an African-American woman, um, and that in and of itself embodies something different than what we have now. And different is what many young voters want in Iowa. It's cold. Back to being kind. We need a little bit of that. There are many, many reasons why students are going to be voting this fall. Climate change, education funding, health care. We may go to every march that we can possibly attend. And those things may make us feel good in the moment. But I tell you, it's a Band-Aid. The cure to every issue that we have right now, those issues that are going through your mind, the cure to those issues is our ability to go to the ballot box and say yay or nay to him or her. This big event on the eve of midterms also brought out big headliners for DeGere and her Democratic Party colleagues. Discrimination is wrong, that we all share a common humanity. <laughs> Throughout her campaign, DeGere made trips across the Hawkeye State to small town meetings, some with relatively small gatherings held in places like this corner bar, even talking to lifelong Republicans. There are people you just approach with the understanding that they think you're a stranger and you open yourself up to them to have a conversation. DeGere runs a small business in Des Moines and it's her first run at political office, but she's no stranger to politics. While in college, Dajir was a student leader for presidential candidate Barack Obama in 2008. Dajir is not saying whether or not she'll run again for any political office, but Dajir does say there's nothing like the power of the vote. That's likely to continue to be her passion and purpose, perhaps launching what's yet to come. This is just the start. This is just the start. No longer will we settle for menial, uh, menial turnout. No longer will we settle for our Secretary of State not reaching out to all communities. No longer. Because we know what's possible. 
Let's hold on to each other. Let's hold on to our values. And let's never, ever forget the value of the vote. Never. In Des Moines, Grace Provenzano with Holly Schlesselman from the Greenlee School of Journalism and Mass Communication at Iowa State University. An Iowa Senate subcommittee approved a bill to expand the state's medical marijuana program for a wider range of health problems. It would also let health care providers approve use of marijuana products for any condition for which they could determine would, quote, be medically beneficial, end quote. Currently, patients who want to join the medical marijuana program have to get a doctor to certify a qualifying medical condition, like Crohn's disease, AIDS, or seizures. The bill is now headed to the Senate Judiciary Committee. Does your car have a name? If so, you're not the only one. An online survey conducted by the service One Poll asked 2,000 American motorists and found that 60% think of their car as part of the family and nearly as many drivers have given their car a name. 42% of the names given to cars come from a prominent feature or distinction that the car has. The majority of the remaining 58% of the car's names, name inspirations come from famous cars, people, songs, or shows. Lastly, the survey found that 40% of drivers talk to their cars, primarily motiv motivating them to start or go faster. <laughs> oh, maybe I should give my car a name. Have you, either of you named yours? My van's name is Vanessa. <laughs> I've, I've never given any of my car's names, but my sister has given all of hers different names. I feel like I need to do that. Yeah. I have not done that before. Um, well, that's all we have of this new edition of News Watch. <laughs> Don't forget to follow us on our social media platforms at ISU TV. And as always, stay warm, stay safe, and stay classy, Ames. <laughs>